subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello dear students, how are you all? This is Karim and welcome to Karim's Biology. We have been discussing the lesson Cell the Basic Unit of Life and this is the last and final part of the lesson. And in today's class, we will be learning about diversity in animal cells. Remember children, in my previous session, I have explained about the diversity in plant cells and we saw different types of plant cells shaped in different ways as they have to perform different functions. Is the same thing applicable to animal cells as well? Let us find out that and let's enter into the topic. Before we begin, I want to show you the picture of different types of animal cells. Though they are different types of cells, they are all present, may be present or may not be present in the same animal. Have a keen observation on the shapes and the parts present in the cells because I am going to ask you some questions on this concept. So the first question is, are there any similarities in the shape of the cells? Have a keen observation of all these cells. All of them are animal cells, no doubt at all. But when you look at the shapes of these cells, let us first compare this nerve cell to that of a blood cell. Is there any similarity? No, they are different. Now compare the blood cell to that of a muscle cell. The blood cell is round, whereas the muscle cells, they are spindle shaped. Now compare the muscle cell to that of the sexual cells, which are gametes. So this is the male gamete, which is in the form of an arrow. It has a tail. And this is the female gamete which is big and round but the muscle cells they are in spindle shape right so it gives the clear indication that all these cells they may not be in similar shape a few of them may be similar but most of them are not in similar shape okay and uh, one common thing about all of them is that all of them are very tiny they are small and can be seen only under microscope so they are small and microscopic and they are in different shapes as i told you and uh, another important similar character is that all of them have a nucleus look at the epithelial cells here epithelial cells are the cells which are present on the superficial parts of your body it has a nucleus immune cells have nucleus even sex cells they have nucleus in them muscles have muscle cells have nucleus fat cells also have a nucleus right and uh, like that even the stem cell from which all these cells are differentiated it also has a nucleus okay then do all the cells have nucleus do all the cells have nucleus there are a few exceptions for example look at the blood cell this is red blood cop cell in most of the cases red blood cop cells they do not have a nucleus right this is an exception especially in mammals the red blood cop cells they do not have a nucleus and almost all the other cells have a nucleus then you know that nucleus is the brain of the cell without the nucleus how these rbc are going to survive children you have to remember the fact here when the red blood cells are newly formed they will be born with the nucleus but once the blood cells become adult they gradually lose the nucleus in order to accommodate more cytoplasm thereby more hemoglobin so as to carry more amount of oxygen to different parts from the lungs okay so these are a few exceptions now come to the next part of the lesson once again i am showing the pictures now we are going to analyze the cells all these different types of cells uh, we have to we are going to name the cell we will write the shape of the cell and uh, we will also uh, list out where these cells are usually observed and their function as well now look at the first cell this is as i told you red blood cells okay and these are the muscle cells this is the nerve cell these are the bone cells and this is the white blood cell now let us list out and find the details of these cells first one as i told you it is the rbc which is called red blood cell and the second one in which the cells are in which shape yeah we are going to find out that the second one is the muscle cell and the third one is the nerve cell fourth one bone cell and the last one is white blood cell okay now let us uh, talk about rbc what is the shape of this rbc when you talk about shape you can say it is round of course it is round but 
look at the middle look at the surface of this rbc here at the middle there is a depression right there is a uh, small cave or there is a depression here this type of uh, depression will also be there on the other side of the rbc okay they are discoid they are not round they are disc shaped and uh, there is a concave surface here and other side also there is a concave surface okay so we can say that they are circular as in the form of circle and they are biconcave as i told you that the surface is having a concave surface and uh, both sides are concave surfaces that is why it is referred as biconcave bi means two concave means concave surface it has two concave surfaces now let us find out what are the different parts that you see in this rbc you can see the cell membrane which is the outer layer and you can see a cytoplasm and you cannot find a nucleus there because i told you earlier that in mature rbc nucleus will be lost in order to accommodate more cytoplasm thereby more hemoglobin and the function of rbc is as it has hemoglobin it helps in the transport of oxygen from the lungs to different parts of the body right now come to the second cell muscle cell the muscle cells are present in your muscles they are responsible for we will be learning about that now come to the shape what is the shape i told you that it is thin on either side which is giving the appearance of a spindle so they are spindle shaped they are long and they are contractile contractile means they can contract and relax which helps you to move from place to place now what are the parts that you see here you can also see cell membrane in this you can find the cytoplasm and you can find a big nucleus and remember the nucleus is absent in rbc but present in this muscle cell what is the function i told you that it has contractile function they are contractile means they can contract and relax so the movement in your body is brought about by muscle cells that's the function of the muscle cell now come to the nerve cell when compared to all the other cell they are very different they have uh, a body and they have a long tail like structure which is called a process technically named as axon so what is the shape the shape is long they are long and uh, what are the parts that you find in them you can find cell membrane you can find cytoplasm you can find nucleus and a long process a long tail like structure which is called axon or a long process can be seen in this now cell and what is the function the function is to conduct the now impulses you know children in our body information has to be passed on from one part of the body to other part especially the information has to be carried from the brain to the body parts or from the sense organs to the brain this information in your body will be transmitted in the form of electrical impulses so in order to transport that electrical impulses or in order to conduct that electrical impulses nerve cells are useful and you will be learning about the shape parts and how the nerve cell functions in your higher classes now come to the next bone cell it is star shaped it is visible from outside it is roughly star shaped and you can find a cell membrane nucleus and cytoplasm and the function is related to bone formation okay now come to the white blood cells white blood cells are irregular and the shape is irregular or amoeboid and the name of the parts are cell membrane you can find a big nucleus which is bilobed and you can also find cytoplasm and within the cytoplasm you can also see small granule like structures okay and the function is it is important for immune system you know we have immune system in our body which is meant for fighting the germs that enter your body and protect your body from diseases so the white blood cells are associated with your immune system which protects you from any disease right so that's about the shape size and the function of these cells now let us come to the next topic where we are going to learn about why we have different shapes and sizes of cells so before i begin i want to show the pictures of these two tools here i hope that you are well aware of these tools the first tool that you see here is the hammer and the second one is the spade both the tools are made up of iron both the tools have a handle to hold them but look at the head of these two tools the head of this hammer is cylindrical and heavier whereas the head of this spade is flat and in the form of a blade the shape is different why their shape is different 
because both of them have to perform different functions if you look at the function of the hammer it is useful to hit at any object to break it and whereas the function of this spade is to dig the soil can you dig the soil by using a hammer and can you break any object by using this flat blade may be difficult right so their shape is meant for their function as the hammer has to hit at the objects it is heavier and cylindrical as the spade has to dig the soil it is flat sharp and in the form of a blade so that easily we can dig the soil right so in other words i can say that the shape of these two tools is determined by the function that they perform in the same way as in our body different functions are being carried out they need different shapes of the cells so ultimately some of the cells they will be shaped in order to suit the function that they perform as the nerve cells have to carry information in the form of impulses they are long wire like so what is going to determine the shape and size of the cell the shape and size of the cell is determined by the specific function of the cell then what about the shape of amoeba how many of you have seen amoeba amoeba is a unicellular animal and one of the important and interesting feature about amoeba is that the shape of this amoeba is not fixed amoeba is an unicellular animal which belong to the phylum protozoa i am going to show the footage of this amoeba look at this as it is microscopic when you observe amoeba under microscope this is how it appears it is tiny it doesn't have any cell wall but when you look at this small footage can you see small finger like projections are being formed from the surface of the cell look at here there is a small finger like projection right and these finger like projections are constantly formed reformed and because of this amoeba it doesn't have a fixed shape can you say that amoeba is round can you say it is star shaped can you say it is long like that of the nerve cell no because it is constantly changing its shape due to the formation of this pseudopodia so you got a new word here called pseudopodia what are these pseudopodia i'm going to explain the shape of the amoeba is irregular we call it irregular shape because it is not in a fixed shape it keeps on changing its shape due to the formation of these finger like projections okay the finger like projections are protruding from the surface of amoeba they are finger like projections which are appearing in the form of feet that's why they are called pseudopodia that's about pseudopodia and what is the other important aspect in amoeba i want to explain these projections appear and disappear when the amoeba moves forward and we are calling them as false feet because it is with the help of the pseudopodia amoeba constantly moves forward and these pseudopodia are not only useful for the movement but they are also useful at the time of intake of food by the cell look at this there is a food particle here and amoeba is slowly forming finger like projections onto this food particle look at this there is a food particle here and amoeba is slowly forming the finger like projections onto the food particle and slowly these pseudopodia are fused together and ultimately a small food vacuole is formed here okay and the food is now taken into the cell where it will be digested that is another important use of pseudopodia okay that's about amoeba and its pseudopodia now come to the size of the cell the size of the cells in living organisms may be millionth of a meter which is called micron or may be as large as a few centimeters see we have some of the cells in our body which are very small and uh, some of the cells which are long and can be visible to the naked eye as well which have few millimeters or centimeters now is there any unit of measurement we will also be learning about that most of the cells because they are too small to be seen with naked eye they can be seen only through a microscope as i told you that microscope magnifies the cells several hundreds of times so that we can see them very clearly then what about the measurement 
you know we have units for measuring anything we have units to measure the weight we have units to measure the length we have units to measure the distance right then is there any unit to measure the tiniest cells of course we have units to measure the tiny cells look at the table here you can understand for example one meter one meter is equal to 100 centimeters that means if you take one meter scale and divide that into 100 parts then each part will be called a centimeter again you take that centimeter divide that into 10 equal parts then each part will be called a millimeter so one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters again you take this one millimeter divide that into thousand parts then each part of the thousand each unit of the thousand is said to be micrometer in other words one millimeter can be divided into thousand micrometers right and if you take again one micrometer and divide that again into thousand parts then that is called nanometer so one micrometer is equal to thousand nanometers so the cells that you see around in and around your body they may be in micrometers or millimeters or in centimeters their size may be in micrometers or millimeters and the organelles present in them may be in the form of nanometers or some of the viruses or viral particles their size will be in nanometers okay that's about the units of measurement and by the way do you know which is the biggest animal cell and which is the biggest bacteria that is discovered so far if you knew the answer please write the answer in the comment box below Okay, dear students, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I will meet you in my next session.